Hello, everybody. Eugene Creeping is on air, and I am totally sure that you know who are Beatman. Every miner in the world knows this name because Beatman is the largest producer of the mining equipment in the world. But the main question, the more interesting question right now, is why Beatman came to the crypto exchange and finance space and we are about today to find the right answer on that question with my guest today please welcome Cynthia Wu the founding partner of Matrix Sport Cynthia thanks for joining us it's great to have you on my show thank you Jimmy thanks for inviting me it's a great honor to be here with your audience well first of all we need to thank to Roman Kaufman he that guy uh, we know him very well in our Russian crypto community. He arranged this interview, Roman. Thanks for you. And Celia, the first question I should ask you is everything good with Bitmine and why he decided to go to the crypto exchange space? Sure, thanks for the question. I think this is one of the most asked questions when people like, heard of Matrix Port, which is the name of our company, and uh, to heard that we are uh, a spin-off from Bitmain, and people will naturally come to the next question is, oh, why Bitmain is doing that, and what's their next vision and dream? Uh, I, I think I, I can address this in from, a, uh, from a few perspectives. Uh, so Jihan, uh, he, he started Bitmain, uh, back in 2013, 2012 actually. Uh, I think at that point of time, in, in the, it's a very nascent uh, community. It's very, crypto is a very, very new thing. I think uh, across the world, is only a handful of people know it, mine it, and believe it. So back then, the, the blockchain, the Bitcoin network is still small. The what the industry needed most is a, a, a trustworthy and stable network. And how to do that, you need to have mining uh, hash rate. You need to provide hash rate. You need to get more people to come to mine, right? And that's how this network becomes stronger and robust. So I think Jihan had that vision. I think he, he sort of uh, uh, successfully delivered his first vision and dream and brought Bitmain into a sort of a world largest mining equipment uh, producer. And now the time is fast forwarded to 2019 actually 2018 there was a lot of discussion uh internally in bitmain about what is the next big opportunity and jihan is also spending a lot of time thinking about where the next the big thing for the company and uh, i think now at, at this point in time um the crypto network is already having 10 years of uh, uh developments and the hash rate is already very strong. I think it will be very challenging if you want to break that network, right? It's it's very safe network now. So so I think the miner already did their contribution. And what's next? Because there's a lot of mined crypto already in the place. I think the next need that uh, demand or potential uh, exponential growth opportunity that uh, major, uh, that Bitmain identified, Jihan identified, is crypto financial space. Because there's more crypto out there, uh, the miners also holding a lot more crypto. So there's a few things they need. They need to trade it, right? They they need to they they need the liquidity of it. They need to be able to buy and sell, and they need to borrow money, right? With the the the, the coin. And as a collateral, they want to borrow uh, a loan, for example, in stablecoin form, and they want to be able to buy more mining rigs or invest into mining uh, farms, equipment, and further expand their business. So it's like, uh, so this be like a working finance, working capital financing, they need that. And they also need, they're also holding more crypto on their hand. They want to be able to earn a yield on their crypto. They want BTC to earn more BTC, right? ETH to earn more ETH. So they need investment products that can give them yield on the on, on crypto. So I think based on this understanding, like uh, and also our clients, the miners has been approaching Bitmain for this kind of services in a informal way, uh, in informal way. Sorry, um, back in 2017 and 18. So we come to a stage where we feel that this is the thing. This is a 
value add uh, services we want to produce, uh, we want to provide for the community. And that, uh, that actually uh, create a lot of synergy to the to the upstream like uh, mining rig business as well because when people buy rigs from Bitmain, they also if you can pr keep on providing them value added services, they tend to have better uh, brand loyalty, right? They tend to come back to you more. So I think commercially that also makes sense. So in the early in the February of 2019, um, we make a big decision that we spin off from Bitmain into a separate entity and separate brand name called Matrix Port that we want to build a crypto financial services platform. Or you can consider it as a crypto bank. We're not exactly like an order book exchange because we basically is more like a bank because we, we, we are the counterparty that the miners or the retailers face when they want to get liquidity to trade their trade buy or sell their crypto or purchase investment pro yield products or get a loan. So we are uh, basically providing all that financial services in one stop for them. So that's our story in a, in a nutshell. Thanks well, for that's, that's fascinating story. And we knew that Jihan Wu is a very talented guy and how he might have been so happy that he's having so clever a partner, founding partner of Mod Explorer like you, Cynthia. Um, crypto finance space is super competitive exchanges the DeFi space is rising so high and so on and so forth and now the modern export is is in it uh what product innovation has modern export made that are different from other exchanges and platforms could you explain Sure. Thank you. You, I think Eugenie, you rightfully addressed the, the 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 situation in the crypto financial space. It's for sure very competitive, and it's going to be more competitive. And you see a lot of more like mainstream like uh, investment banking or, or hedge fund managers now coming to uh, crypto asset, and realizing that is uh, it's a very uh, big and uh, growing market. So you, you will see when you see more talent, of course, you will see more competitions, more brands, more services. So it's very important to innovate, I would say, because providing a, a vanilla uh, universal product does, does not work anymore. Like it probably worked two years back when you can still charge 1% margin on the on OTC spot trading. Now the margin is going as low as 10, 10 bips, like 15 bips, sometimes even lower, right? How, how can you sustain your business case if you don't innovate? So it's very important to innovate. Uh, I think for us, we innovate from uh, uh, a few areas. Uh, I think innovation comes from two ways. One is that you know your clients really well you know their demands, you know their untold uh, request, right? Once you know that, you will find a way to address that by providing product that does not exist elsewhere. That's one type of innovation. The other type of innovation that you know financial instruments really, really well, and you know that this kind of financial instrument does not exist in crypto world yet, and then you introduce that and see, okay, how many people buy that idea? So there's a basically two angle of uh, innovation. I think we are addressing this market from both of these angles. Uh, I want to, like before I jump into the real uh, example, I want to talk a little bit about our team's background. So maybe you will see how that two angle blends well. So why that we know the, uh, uh, we, we currently have 150 people globally uh, in major sports, 70 of them, we brought over from Bitmain when we first spin off. So you can see that these 70 people are from were from the trading of Bitmain like mining industry, right? So so they know like how miner works, what miner cares, what's their cost curves, what's their risk appetite, like what market is good for them, what market is not good for them. So so that's where uh, we bring our mining legacy into and knowledge to the major sport. The other half of our team is recruited after we establish ourselves. So they are, we have, uh, I personally, I used to work at a Hong Kong exchange, which is a stock and a derivative exchange, leading, leading one in the world. And we have investment bankers from uh, Bank of America, Miller Lynch. We have uh, investment banker from JP Morgan, uh, Goldman, the Goldman Sachs, and also Barclays, Deutsche Bank. So we also brought in people who know the traditional asset class really well, who know derivative well, who know structured product well, 
and we recruit them, and then these people will talk, right? They'll talk, and then they understand the client needs, and they, then, then they, they think about what product they can feed to this client. So there, uh, 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 there's a lot of innovation we, we brought uh, uh, um, over, but I want to focus on two examples. So one product that, that we launched uh, last October is called Dual Currency Product new currency investment product. That product is going viral. I mean, we're the first one doing that in, in, in the crypto space. That kind of product used to exist in FX uh, world, right? So how they work is that when you invest in BTC, right? And that product gives you a double digit or three digits annualized return. It sounds insane, right? How can you get that much return? Is that safe? Is that a scam? No, it's not. How do we do that? It's, uh, we basically use the uh, structure um, use derivative market, uh, derivative product to structure um, a, a, a retail sort of option product uh, because currently the volatility of the price, is, uh, volatility of the Bitcoin is very high. So you can basically get that type of return by uh, setting covered call in the market. So, and collect the premium. And premium actually, if you look at it in an annualized way, it's a very high yield. So we'll provide that kind of a uh, role uh, to, uh, to the miners. So they use this tool to earn a Bitcoin, uh, to, to get a high yield on their Bitcoin. And if they, they're willing to sell at certain price, which is a link price, uh, that is maybe 10% higher than today's price, um, then some of them are happy to sell, right? So this kind of product provides uh, a tool of hedging for them and also provide them, them a way to earn yield on their, 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 their Bitcoin. So after launching it, I think now it's already happened uh, seven months since seven, eight months since we, we launched it. We are now trading 300 to 500 BTC notionals on daily basis. And a lot of, uh, uh, we, we have traders from 20 different countries like uh, trading this product. That's definitely is, uh, a means that it's addressed something that uh, uh, used to be their pain point, but haven't, um, was not met uh, before. And the second, we the innovative product we provide is called zero cost loan, right? Uh, as I just mentioned, there's a need to 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 finance working capital from us. So the miners they will come to us and they will say, okay, I have a uh, uh, 200 BTC, right? I want to borrow USDT to 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 buy more many rigs. Can I pledge my uh, BTC with you and I borrow money from you? So we do a lot of that regular trade. But this zero cost loan means that we structure it in a way that you don't need to pay any interest for this loan. Okay, zero cost loan means zero interest for the loan. Right? Let's say you borrow money for six months and you don't pay any interest. But let's say today's Bitcoin price is 9,000, right? You have to give up uh, the upside of uh, upside uh, uh, beyond a certain uh, take profit price if at the expiry, uh, when the loan come expire, the market is higher than that uh, price. So let's say the linked price, the, the take profit level is 12,000, which is much higher than today's price. A lot of uh, miners might feel, okay, sure, if at the expiry is at 12,000, I can sell it. So basically, we take the upside of the, the whatever beyond the 12,000, but the, the, the clients can sell at 12,000 if uh, at the expiry, the settlement price is above 12,000. But if it, at a settlement, the price is below 12,000, then basically they can borrow uh, the, the, the loan for free. So this kind of loan is quite interesting for people because they feel that, oh, the, the financing become free. And also there's no margin call, even though, even though you see big market meltdown like March of the 12th, even though uh, the, in, for the normal loan, you will have to keep pledging more, right? margin call, right? You have to pledge more BTC to keep your loan. But for this kind of uh, product, you don't have to. You just have a peace of mind. You can just uh, sleep very well during the night. So the miners like this type of loan. Uh, I think these are a couple of uh, uh, the most uh, um, notable innovation from us. But of course, there are a lot more like smaller minor innovations. So that's why we've been mentioned by Forbes and by Bloomberg on on, 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 on some of the innovative products that we offer to the market. Well, thank you for a super detailed explanation. And I want to uh, 
Sorry to be too detailed. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we need some more information uh, from you. I'm going to ask you about the next the following. You have been constantly saying that the Matrix board is the spin off from Pete Main. And Pete Main has a very large client's base and well renowned, world renowned brand. Everybody knows them. And it's logically to use the client's base of Pete Main to provide the Matrix board services and you have already said about that how does matrix sport i want to ask you help miners and what kind of products are suitable for miners and first uh can i uh, sorry can i beg your pardon for the last question last sentence uh, what kind of product are suitable for miners especially Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think Ambimin is a, a tremendous uh, legacy for us. I mean, the brand name, the client tell, uh, the, 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 the recognition that we have definitely help us to gain the trust from our initial users, which primarily is miners very quickly. Uh, but I, w I have to say that we are expanding our user base as well. So currently, if you look uh, from the revenue contribution, I would say like 60% uh, of that revenue coming from the mining community, which is very close to Bitmain and this whole mining ecosystem. But the other 40% coming from the financial industry, family offices, hedge funds, uh, high net worth individuals, um, some venture like crypto venture funds as well. So we, we do see that part growing in the, in the future. So I think we are more like a, we we are a, a financial institution that's providing um, a, a product uh, services to all like institutions and also retails. So I wouldn't say in the long term we are very restricted to 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 this mining space. But of course, yes, that's forever going to be our core clients, and we we value uh, the the trust, and also we we want to do more business with uh, mining circle. So coming back to your question, like what products the the, the miners like most uh, and they use most from uh, the uh, our platform, I think uh, uh, it's quite uh, obvious because we already get the data. We've been running for one year and a half almost, and we get the data, so I can maybe speak from the data so i think uh, first of all of course uh, some of the miners they when they uh when they uh, mine bitcoin at certain more times they need to sell it right into uh, fiat so uh, the first need they need is otc trading into sell that into another type type of crypto asset or into fiat usd for example so there we're, we're facilitating a large uh, order uh, like uh, bulk otc trading uh, that's uh, that. That's where we started actually, and then the uh, the other another need is to pledge their Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin uh, for for the loan because miners, uh, generally speaking, they are underbanked. Even though some of them might be very very out wealthy, but still they are not a target client or bank. If you tell the bank, say, okay, I have a uh, ten thousand uh, BTC, can you Give me a loan. I think the answer probably no for now, uh, which is gives opportunity for people like us who run a crypto bank, right? So, so instead they come to us and say, okay, can I give you ten thousand BBC uh, as a collateral and uh, take a loan from us? And we will say yes. So that's uh, that's a very natural and basic demand for miners, and that's also recurring demand, right? Um, and uh, like I said, we, we fur further innovate the, the vanilla sort of uh, collateralized loan into zero cost loan, which is have some structured uh, uh, product design behind it. It's, uh, we, we, we use zero to product to structure the loan to take away certain risks from miners and also uh, take away some costs, like the interest from them. But uh, of course, the price they need to pay is that they give us uh, some of the upside beyond the certain price that they're willing to sell. So, so we we make uh, we we fine tune this product into uh, to further innovate to 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 cater to the need of the miners or at least a segment of the miners a little bit better. Uh, and then on sort of the typical um, uh, need from the miners, of course, when they have 10,000 uh, BTC, they want more BTC. Uh, I mean, so so the yield product, the, the Bitcoin yield product, uh, they, uh, it's kind of popular. That's why the dual currency investment product is kind of going viral because it helped the miners to, to earn more BTC. Otherwise, it's just sitting in the wallet. It will never grow 
just like a gold, right? So I, I think these are the three needs that we see most. Of course, I think more, we've been asked constantly by miners that, oh, do, in the future, are you going to have difficulty derivatives for us to hedge out the, the uncertainty of the uh, difficulty of mining? I think that's definitely a very good uh, question. It's definitely going to have a market when this kind of product arrives to the market. Um, we are also like looking closely into this uh, segment. Um, we believe that there's still uh, unmet demand uh, of the mining uh, miners, and we're happy to 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 be very open uh, to talk to them, understand their needs, and use our financial engineering knowledges to try to meet that needs in the future. So yeah. It's an ongoing process. Well, I do see that you guys have learned the problems and needs of the miners community so well, and you understand what products and services to offer for this type of clients, benefit for other clients. Let's switch to team. Every business has the team of good people. What is Matrix Sport team composed of, and how many of you are from Bitmain, and what kind of backgrounds? Do rest of the team have explained, please, about your team? Sure. Thanks for zooming in to uh, the people. And uh, it's always the people that's driving the business. So I think for, uh, for, for it's uh, very important to ask, like, who is operating the team and what's the team's expertise uh, experience when you choose a platform, um, especially when you're doing larger scale uh, transactions. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, as I mentioned previously, uh, briefly, that uh, we have, uh, when we spin out from Bitmain, we took 70 people from Bitmain, and these 70 people mainly are uh, developers, right? so they know the, how to build the software very well, and uh, they are uh, security specialists, so they know how to safe keep in the client assets very well, yeah, secure way, because they used to have Bitmain to keep keeping billions of dollars of crypto assets so they have to be good at that so we brought these people uh, over and uh, we know we brought some business developers uh, sales people who used to talk to uh, like run Bitmain sales and BD uh, including like uh, a sheriff who is uh, currently head, uh, heading our uh, the CS region a Russian speaking country's sales he used to work he used to be one of the earliest uh, employee at uh, Bitmain <laughs> and he ran the overseas sales for Bitmain for so many years. So we brought him over and he definitely brought a lot of uh, uh, client trust and relationship over. So that's uh, definitely an asset. And then the other half, which we uh, recruited across uh, one year and a half. So currently we have 150 people uh, globally in seven places. We have uh, globally headquartered in Singapore. We have offices in Hong Kong, I'm based in Hong Kong. Uh, and we have uh, uh, three offices in China, uh, and we have one small office that's holding Swiss FEMA license in Zurich, in Switzerland, and we uh, we also recently opened our Moscow office in March. So currently, Sheriff and Roman are representing us in that market. So uh, why we are there? Because we believe in the market potentials in these markets, and we also believe that uh, uh, they, there's still opportunity um, for another major player. In there, I know that Binance Hobby is already doing very well uh, as an exchange in Russia, but I think we are coming as a crypto bank and we have very easy to use apps and websites and we uh, tackle different uh, prob problems a little bit differently. We still think that we have a good chance to, 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 to sort of uh, gain a market share in Russia. Um, for the miners and traders and the retails. Uh, so that's where we are. In terms of our expertise, uh, the new recruits uh, from our teams are either from uh, typically two back, uh, two, three background, I would say. One is from tra financial traditional institutes like traditional financial exchanges, uh, investment banks, sales trading backgrounds, um, fintech companies that bring a, a rich experience in in, in product knowledge, financial product knowledge, because at the end of the day, uh, Bitcoin or crypto asset is, uh, is, is another commodity, it's another currency. It's not, in terms of trading and product innovation, it's not too different from FX and a commodity. There are a lot of similarity there. So we have experts that's working in this industry for like 10, 20 years, and we know what to do with um, this type of asset. So that's one background. The other background is from 
uh, developers. So we hire people from Google, from Baidu, Alibaba, and because uh, we are basically building a fintech platform, right? It's everything is uh, through our software, through a website, through app. So the user experience is really, really important. It's very different from Bitmain because Bitmain is a hardware company, right? It's mainly rely on sales and distribution resellers. It's this different model. But now we are in a place where we're basically competing with uh, the, the e-banking, right? With the, with the fintech company. So you, the user experience is everything and the, the, the product development uh, um, uh, app uh, development uh, uh, speed is everything. So we have to hire more people that's uh, experienced in that space uh, to help us to, to, to build that user experience and user interface. So that's another background. And third background is compliance because we are different uh, from Bitmain in a way that we are running financial services and financial services in a way is sort of regulated in many different jurisdictions and different jurisdictions have different regulations for that. So that's why we are, uh, why we have the Zurich uh, offices because we are applying for Swiss FINMA uh, licenses and we're also holding trust company license in Hong Kong and we're currently applying for a payment service act like payment service license in Singapore so it's important to be compliant to offer service not only for the reason of trust but also for the reason of risk controls so we are we hire people that having like 20 year different 20 year experience from JP Morgan from Julius Burr, which is only one of the oldest private bank in Switzerland, um, and from CICC, which is a leading investment bank in, in China. Uh, they will hire the compliance officer from there to help us to build the regulatory uh, capability. So that's uh, basically uh, our team. We're still expanding. We hope we can yeah, attract more talents. Well, and the last question I would like to ask you, Syria. Tell me about the plans of Matrix Port, uh, let's say, till the end of 2020, and especially regarding to CIS, the former Soviet Union, part of the world, right. and the rest of the world. I know that you have plans, and I even heard about some rumors that you are maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, going to set up a global crypto exchange and even compete with Binance. Is that true or not? Uh, okay, thanks for the question. I mean, thanks for like uh, following us on the news. It's, uh, it's appreciated. Um, I think for us, of course, we are second year in our product, uh, in our operation. We established, as I said, uh, in February 2019. So we are still building our businesses. Well, I think we're still uh, a growing company. I wouldn't say that uh, we are giants yet. Hopefully we'll be giants in two or three years time. But now we are sort of like a rising star. That's how I best can describe it. Hopefully we can realize all our plans and dreams execution is executed very, really well and then we can be be be, be a major um, bank or, or exchange in two or three years time so I think the plan coming to um, to, to this question um, I think this year we, we would we really on one or three if I, 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 I summarize into one sentence is that we want to uh, build a very good go-to-market strategy for the market that we entered, we already entered, like I mentioned, Hong Kong, Singapore, China, uh, Switzerland, and CS regions. We want to exit well. Uh, we, 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 of course, in the future, we want to expand into more places. Uh, of course, we have that ambition and we, we, we hope we have the capacity to deliver that. But I think we want to be um, like deliver what we promised uh, at the beginning of this, this year when we enter this market. We want to be uh, servicing um, the users from this regions well first. How do we do that? First is that localization like the, the for example in russia roman knows that he's working on the website um uh, to try to deliver the message uh in a way that russian people can understand and uh, relate to i think that's important and we need to have a lot of local events i think COVID 19 definitely put a challenge on all of us um, because offline events might be a little bit challenging. We hope this can improve in the last quarter. We hope to have more like meetups, physical meetups to, to, to see our users, to listen to them, to get their feedback and make improvements. 
Um, and also, if we cannot do that in this quarter, maybe we will do more online, uh, online AMA, online seminars, and provide some trainings on our product uh, to the people in this market. So I think it's a, it's an ongoing process. Um, um, yeah, so we, we really, um, as through partnerships, like for example, thanks for having us for this chat and it's really an honor and help us to, to, to bring Matrix Board to a wider audience. Audience is uh, definitely uh, very, um, something we will really appreciate. Well, thank you very much for this detailed answer, and especially thank you for mentioning online events. They have become very popular this COVID year, and I'm especially as a crypto MC, I, I'm overloaded of conducting these events. So if you need help, just ask me and I will help you. I totally appreciate it. So Celia, we have come to the end. Do you have to add something important? Perhaps we didn't mention before some important information or we may finalize the interview. Sure, can I have an opportunity to ask you a question? Yes, of course. Sure. Uh, you've been a figure uh, in this uh, in this space and in the region, uh, and you definitely have a good track record, track record speaking with different projects, people, leaders in the space. Um, what, what are the opportunity in your mind uh, in, in, in Russian speaking countries? Because you know it's really well, right? And that's my first question. The second question is that, um, uh, I think different um, different uh, jurisdiction, different uh, country have their, their 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 participants are a little bit different. For example, in China, most of the participants, retail participants, are very speculative. You know, they like speculative stuff. They like to kind of gamble, right? And in Russia, what's people? What, what what are the people's characteristic when they come to crypto trading or, or investing? What's in, in their mind? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, the the first answer yeah do you see the perspective of the cis uh, mark uh concerning concerning the risky profile of uh, our guys i would say that russian guys a russian when i say russian i mean the post-soviet population of former russian former soviet sure. republic but quite different of course exists but we may consider like one big russian-speaking community they are low risk than chinese people uh okay. as i as i learned as i searched uh, studied uh the risky profile of uh, chinese and asian guys i think we have uh, quite uh, similar but but nevertheless we are just lower because i don't know why <laughs> maybe some cycle chinese guys are more risky than the russian but i do see pro, i do see yeah. I will. I would divide the crypto community of uh, CIS market into two uh, unequal parts. The small part. Uh, these are they are technical guys, very talented, very experienced uh, developers. They are not risky people. They are interested in technology first. Um, the vast majority, ninety percent of our community, they are like traders, gamblers. They are super interested in crypto exchanges, uh, different services, and so on and so forth. Of course, of course, matrix port has a potential large market in CIS, the Russian speaking internet is up to 400 million people worldwide. So it's definitely recommended for Matrix Sport to explore this part of the world and to try to penetrate. You're definitely in the right way. And if you need my help, just we need to discuss it. Totally, totally appreciate it. So thank you very much, Cynthia Wu. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the interview with Senior Vu, the founding partner of Matrix Sport and Eugene Ramanyanko, aka Crypto MC. Wherever you thank you for watching. Stay tuned for next interviews with different speakers and companies. See ya. Thank you, Jenny.